Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Nothing like doing wine reviews at 2.46 in the morning. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, last set of reviews on this group of reviews for me. Um, anyway, so let's do more from Creative Palette, my friends again. That, dude, I get a lot of wine from them, and they are so cool to send me all this cool wine. Um, so I'm very happy to, to, and actually this year it's been a really great variety of some stuff. So I'm, uh, so far and I'm really excited about it. All right. So let's just get right into it. Um, so these wines are from, uh, Renzo Masi. Um, so this is, uh, from the Chianti Rufina area, uh, the Rufina area of Chianti. So this first one is the Renzo Masi Chianti 2018. Um, yeah. It is, uh, I think this is 95% Sangiovese and 5% Colorino. Let's, uh, I'm just going to get to that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And uh, so let's kind of talk about them real quick. Um, let's see here. Uh, the family tradition of winemaking dates back to 1925 when uh, Paolo's, uh, Paolo, Ma Paolo Masi is the current winemaker and owner. Uh, when his grandfather purchased... Fattoria, which means farm, di Bas Basciano, on the heart of Chianti Rufina. Uh, the, the property occupies a hill overlooking the uh, Ar Argomena Valley on one side of the right bank of the Siev Sieve, I guess S-I-E-V-E, -E, Sieve River on the other. Um, as, as in other top Tuscan areas, the soil here has the famous Galestro, a flaky shale, stony soil, a thousand stony soil, a thousand foot elevation, and a dry, breezy microclimate make for ideal wine growing conditions. Uh, the family farm is a traditional and ecological, ecologically healthy mix of vineyard, 86 acres, and 49 acres of olive groves and forest. Um, they do um, source some of their grapes. Uh, so the the they, they basically they don't have enough grapes to make all the wine they make, but uh, it's but the the uh, purchase wine from their neighbors. Uh, they've worked with the family for an average of fifteen to twenty years, and with some of them working with them for forty years. Um, let's see here, uh, Paolo uh, definitely went. To, uh, he he he's got degrees in agronomy and winemaking from the University of Florence, and uh, it says that for Paolo. There are no sacred cows. If replanting a vineyard or green harvesting improves quality, it is done. So green harvesting is like when they like basically drop fruit, if I remember it correctly. Um, let's see. The result is a more modern style of wine, still endowed with Rufina's traditional capacity for aging, but equally enjoyable upon release. Um, grapes undergo a classic red wine vinification. This is for this wine. Uh, followed by a 10-day maceration to extract the right balance of fruit and color. Um, yeah. And uh, retails for about $12. So because I no longer in the restaurant industry, uh, I'm in the retail side of things, uh, I've been really kind of rediscovering um, wines that don't cost like retail for like 50 bucks and 40 bucks, you know, wines that are costing like 10, 15, $20. Well, my average price to pay for wine has been 20 to 40 ish dollars for quite a while. When you work in fine dining, you kind of get spoiled. Um, and so now I'm in the retail side of things. Uh, I've been really kind of rediscovering some of these, you know, more value priced wines. Um, and, you know, kind of checking out retail places, uh, and like looking forward, like the value stuff. So I'm excited about trying this. It's 
kind of meaty. Like, it's got a little, like, cherry. Um, kind of like, you know, like a cherry sauce on top of, like, some meat or, like, a cherry preserve, like on a charcuterie board of some type. Yeah. That's about it. Not a whole not a whole lot else going on. So let's just try it. It's like more like black cherry and black raspberry. Um yeah, the meatiness isn't really coming through so much on, on the palate. It's there, the meatiness is there, but, or the non-fruit characteristics are there, but it's not like, um, really overwhelming. It's definitely got like kind of a balance between fruit and non-fruit. City's really pretty high. Tannins are not super high. I mean, they're there, but it's not like you're like going, oh my God. Um, and they're, they're building, like as I talk, I can really feel it, feel it more and more on the gums. This happens to me a lot with Sangiovese and especially with Nebbiolo when I'm drinking a Barolo. I will initially go, tannins are medium. And then by the end of me evaluating the wine, I'm like going, holy cow, it's like high. That's not gonna happen with this, not high, but the tannins are building. Like first I was like, oh, it's medium. Oh, it's kind of more medium plus now. Um, but it's really grippy, it's like right, like right there, like specifically in those two parts of my gums. Nowhere else, not on the bottom part, not on the side, right there. Um, it's kind of weird how tannins do that. Yeah, a little smoke on the on the nose there. Um, kind of smoked meat. It's really enjoyable wine, especially for twelve dollars. And that's what's it's not super complex. It doesn't need to be. I mean, I've had $12, like, not Napa cabs, they don't exist, but like $12 California cabs. I'm like, ugh, this, I mean, I like this a lot. But it's not a complex wine. It's like really easy to drink. Uh, it's Sangiovese, it's Chianti. Um, it's got the Italianness to it, but it's not like, so it doesn't have like that really like musty, dusty, leathery thing going on. It's cleaner. Um, it's like, I guess more of a modern kind of style. So it doesn't have like that, that funk that Italian wine is going to have, which can be really off putting for a lot of people. I would consider this more of an international style, more of a, more of a modern style of wine. It's got a touch of it. I mean, it's, it was a little bit there. Like when you saw me kind of pause a little bit earlier, like a couple minutes ago, I was like going, do I get a little dusty mustiness, almost Brett? And it was like, eh, not really, but it, it, there's definitely an Italianness to it, but it's like really subtle. Let's just get on to the next one here because I'm just ready to get done. And it's good wine, and I know I ramble on a lot. Uh, so this wine here is uh, the 2017 um, Erta Ichina, or China, which I'm about to find out. So Erta Ichina means ascent and descent. I had no clue that the word China in Italian means descent. I'm gonna have to look that up. Like literally never knew that. Not that I'm like fluent in Italian because goodness knows I'm not. Anyway, uh, so this is a 50-50 blend of San, San Giovese and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Retails for about $16. Um, it's made from a blend of estate and purchased fruit. And um, he first started making this in 95. Let's see here. What else can I talk about that's relevant? 
Um, let's see. The, the two grape varieties are harvested and fermented separately. Malolactic fermentation takes place in with the, in Europe. They call them inox, I-N-O-X. It's like a brand name for stainless steel. But if you ever hear them say inox, it's stainless steel. Um, tanks to remain to retain vibrancy. The blend is then the blend is created. Lastly, the wine is transferred to French barriques for 14 months, aging in previously used barrels. Um, and for this vintage, uh, there were late spring frosts followed by heat and drought in the summer. <clears throat> uh, the Rafina subzone, uh, being a more northerly location and uh, having proximity to the Apennine Mountains, uh, benefited from occasional summer showers and more moderate temperatures compared to other areas of Chianti. Uh, and then in September, uh, they call them quality saving rains uh, and cooler temperatures happened. Uh, let's see. And that's it. The rest is like actual tasting notes I'm trying to like not look at. Which sucks because like, you know, I do see a little bit of it, but I like, oh, don't look. So I get like black fruit. It's like the cab is really coming through. Like it smells somewhat cab-like because, well, it's half cab. See, so yeah, like a blackberry, black raspberry, raspberry. Um, a touch of vanilla. I know they're previously used oak, but it's not like it's neutral oak. It's just like previously used. So like maybe one use or second use. So there's still gonna be maybe a little bit of um, of uh, um, influence. But again, really light on the nose. I don't know, maybe it's just I'm not picking up a lot today on my nose. I don't know, because it seems like every one I did today, all what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost all, every, every, every one, all seven wines, kind of like, oh, not much on the nose. This is like super juicy. Like the cab is really like making itself known. It tastes like a cab blend. Um, the Sangiovese is kind of giving you the, the cherry and the cab is giving you the, like the, the black and other red fruits. Um, the cherry is almost like a black cherry. There's a richness to it. The vanilla is there, but it's like super integrated. It's not like it's, it's not like I'm going, oh my goodness, I'm like biting into vanilla bean type of thing, you know, I mean, it's there, it's just like, like a, a, a hint of it. Um, tannin is a little bit more than, than this one here. Uh, so a little more higher on the tannin, probably from the cab. Um, the acidity isn't as high. Again, the cab is probably bringing the acidity down, total acidity down just a little bit. Then you can have high acidic cab, which is like crazy because I don't consider Cab a high acid wine, but I was listening to a podcast today about, you know, Ridge and their Montebello and talking about how their Cab is like high in acid or their wine is high in acid Montebello, but it's a Cab blend. A touch of bitterness to it, a touch of coffee to it, which a little bit of a turn off, but not that bad. It's really not that bad. It's like like just a hint, just a hint, is barely hint, almost like tiramisu coffee, which I, I put up with. I kind of love tiramisu because everything else is great in it. Um, I like the one. I kind of like this one better though. I mean, because it's just Italian. This is, this is like, you could call it a super Tuscan. Um, I mean, it's a Toscana, it's an IGT that qualifies for Super Tuscan because it has cab in it. Because you can't have, you can't have um, Chianti with cab in it. Uh, you have Colorino in it, but you can't have cab in it. Um, it's definitely an international style wine. Um, very New world in to it. I 
I like the wine though. I like the wine. I like the wine for what it is. It's it's a Italian wine that's using Cabernet Sauvignon in it for half the half of the half of the blend. Um, you get you get both the the Sangiovese and the Cab in there. It's a very tasty wine. More fruit forward than this one. This is a little more has a little more earth to it. But I like it. I like the wine. Today I like this one better. Tomorrow I might like this one better because my mood might be different. And that's that's what's great about wine and in general with me. It depends on my mood, which wine I want to drink today. Do I want old world? Do I want new world? For the most part, I tend to, I tend to lean old, old world when, I, when I'm like, what wine do I want to drink today? But sometimes I just want like fruit bomb, oak monster. I know Gary uses that. You know, oak monster, fruit bomb, just like bourbon barrel, not quite bourbon barrel, but you know, like that. American oak, vanilla overload, and that's what I want to drink today, or that day. Today I want Old World, but anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, basically, you should buy it if you like that. 16 bucks, it's not expensive. I'm going to finish this one. Why? Because I can. It's the last wine of the. This is the last one I'm doing today. All right, so. Um, that's going to do it for today. You can click the links above to frame me up. Click the links below to find out more about the winery. Click the donate button over there. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.